Welcome back to True Story with John Gibson. Today's guest is a special guest. He's a good friend, one of my favorite fighters in the world. Uh, fresh <laughs> off his boxing debut and a TKO victory, Johnny Hollywood Case. Dude, thank you so much for having me on. I always love talking with you, my man. Always my pleasure. Always, man. Well, hey, to that end, congratulations on the recent victory. And, um, man, I wanted to first maybe start there and just kind of pick your brain a little bit about uh, – just the experience, your boxing debut, you know, it's so different transition uh, from MMA, you know, and, and traditional <laughs> kickboxing. So what was that entire kind of experience like? Do you mind sharing? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's a little different for me because, uh, you know, I'm kind of a decorated MMA fighter already. For sure. So it's easier. It's easy for me to kind of create a buzz and, uh, you know, making my boxing pro boxing debut in my hometown at the casino was you know, I was kind of spoiled in those regards, you know, um, didn't really feel like my first pro fight there. It felt like I'd been there a million times, you know, so, um, but man, boxing, it, it really kind of, uh, you know, kind of invigorated my, my, my combat sport, you know, enthusiasm again, you know, just, uh, there's so many more just sequences and scenarios and positions you get into in, in a boxing fight that you don't in MMA because of the range difference and, and the kicks and the grappling. And, um, so it was, it's, it's different. It's almost like, you know I mean? Like not necessarily like I'm starting over, but like I'm a novice again, you know, there's, I still have a lot to learn about boxing as an MMA as well, but it seems like uh, boxing is like just getting done, just getting started up the mountain. Well, I feel you're being a little modest. You're, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll say for the record, I was there, I was in person and, and I had the pleasure of watching uh, Johnny fight and, and I saw the performance myself and with my own eyes, he did great. He looked very, very proficient, more than a novice, for sure. Um, but that's a great, hey, always like a white belt kind of mentality. I like that, you know, always Got learning it. and looking to evolve. I think that's a great mentality to have, man. Um, yeah, so to that end, I mean, I guess just uh, have you fallen in love with it, with just with boxing? Yeah, I mean, I really have, you know. It's just, man, it's it, it's it's a different sport for sure. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's definitely just, you know, I think it's – and this isn't like a knock to boxing at all. Like it's obviously there's levels to the game, but it's so much easier looking like when you're in a fight, you know what you're going to get, right. There's only going to be punches. Yeah. There's going to be different angles. Yeah. There's going to be different footworks and you know, it's level changes and whatnot, but it's not like, Oh, I got to worry about kicks and I got to worry about takedowns, you know? So right. it was, it was awesome. Just being able to focus, just planning your feet and just being able to focus on just throwing hands um, yeah. and it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun, man. And, and to be honest, like the training camps are a lot easier on your body. Um, yeah. During, I mean, during I imagine, yeah. Less impact yeah. overall. Right. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting that you said that, uh, it, to your point, I, I'm really glad you brought that up because I was watching, uh, the Paul Woodley fight this past weekend. And then again, this morning I was watching, um, kind of a fight breakdown by, uh, Teddy Atlas, the boxing trainer. Yeah. And his feedback, his insight, obviously, it's like Teddy Atlas, it's, you know, so I was listening closely. Yeah. Right. Um, and I guess, you know, one of the takeaways that he shared was that Woodley seemed a little apprehensive, like a little bit uh, wasn't ready to pull the trigger a lot. Maybe, you know, and his theory was maybe because he'd been such a successful MMA fighter yeah. practitioner for so many years. You know, he had to account for defense all the time, takedowns, all these things, leg kicks, where he said maybe that mentality kept him from translating to pull the trigger fully in boxing again that's his theory and sure. hey, he could go and i'm listening right um, yeah. so it's interesting to hear you explain that very thing to me that's really interesting yeah no that's i'd say he's pretty spot on with that um for sure it's just in with boxing it's like you can really get creative like you can really dice it up with somebody when all when all they can do is punch you back you know what i mean it's like if you're throwing if, like you start throwing your hands like that in an mma fight you're going to get taken down yeah. You know I mean, you start lighting somebody up like that. They're, they're going to be, they're going to be wanting to switch the, switch right. the game real quick, you know, or unless they're a good striker too, but you, that's rare that you see two guys really mm -hmm. stand in that boxing range and really just mm -hmm. throw down like that. I mean, it happens, you know, Lamas and uh, Holloway, you know, yeah. I mean, like there's, there's, there's plenty of fights like that where they just stand in that phone booth and go, but yeah, it was, a, it's fun, man. I can't wait. I can't wait to, uh, you know, get that, get back to MMA. It's been, you know, my, my last fight was for the, the Ryzen Grand Prix, New Year's Eve 2020. So um, I just became number one contender for those guys back. You know, I have the only win over the current champ. Right. Um, so it'd be good. It'd be nice to get back there and, you know, get that world title. But, uh, you know, 
I, I, I've always said I got into this sport to win a world title. You know what I mean? Got an MMA to win a world title. Yeah. And I'm so close, you know, and right when I get that world title, for me, that's the top of the mountain. You know, I will have accomplished everything that I want to do in the sport. You know, I'll defend my title. Um, I'll, I'll take other, I'll take fun fights that are, that are, you know, make sense, make money. But I think after I win that world title in MMA, man, I'm going to put a lot of my focus into boxing and uh, see if I can win a world title in boxing too. Yeah. It'd be amazing. I mean, you have the aptitude, the talent, the tools to do both for sure. In my opinion, um, I can't wait to see, you know, I can't wait to see Ryzen, how that develops and hopefully the, th- you know, hopefully everything with the pandemic, you know, things sort of normalize and stabilize for us. So, you know, we can move on and you can go and compete again. Um, but in the meantime, uh, you know, regarding your next sort of uh, sort of the boxing agenda, you know, um, any announcement, any announcements to that end or any fights coming up? Yeah, actually. So I just got just got another one signed last week. I'll be boxing again in my hometown at the casino uh, October 30th. Um, awesome. should, be, should be a good worthy opponent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the kid, the kid that I, um, I'm fighting, he actually was like an Indiana golden glove champion or something like that. So he's, uh, got the experience on me in boxing, but, um, I, I always come to fight. So right. yeah. <laughs> I can't, yeah, I'll do my best. Absolutely. As always yeah. to support you, but to be there a hundred percent. And I can't wait to see it too. You know, the, the card that was, you know, the card that was last held at the casino that you fought on um, and you were the headline on um, was really well run. I don't, I don't recall who their promoter was, but uh, actually can, do you mind sharing that? Cause I'd love to compliment them. <laughs> yeah, actually it's uh, one of the longest running promoters in the world, actually. Oh, Monty wow. Cox is, with extreme challenge. Um, he managed, you know, Matt Hughes, Pat Militich, yeah. uh, you know, Ed, the, who's who, you know what I mean? Like he, he was the promoter back in like, um, you know, Militich. I've heard of him for years. I didn't know that. Yeah. He, he, that was him. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That's Monty Cox. Yeah. Extreme oh. challenges. And then, uh, extreme Maximus boxing is the, uh, the event for the boxing. So. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you again for yeah. sharing. It's so well produced, well ran. Um, everybody, it was real. I mean, I was so impressed with everything. And again, the casino as well, totally accommodating. Everybody should come out. Great show. Uh, but I was again, really impressed with the way they built that car. You can tell sometimes when things come together or fall apart and you can tell <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of planning in that and it was super it was entertaining. And, you know, I brought my wife and for my wife to come and sit for a couple hours of boxing is a big deal. So it was definitely a good time. Yeah, man, it was so awesome to have you guys there too and have your support. Man, it felt like we're going to blow the roof off that thing, you know? Yeah, of um, course. I can't wait to see the next one. So a Golden Gloves champion. So definitely yeah. a formidable opponent. Are you fighting? Uh, what weight are you fighting at? This one will be at 165. So last fight, I didn't really cut any weight. You know, I was wow. like, you know, I wa- usually walk around like 180, 185 pounds. So fight at 175 wasn't a big deal. Now this one will be at 165. So okay, great. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's 165. And, and then it's still a little bit, it's not quite 155. So, you know, I'm not like everybody says they're like, Oh, well we can get fights at 55, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, but it's not the fight that you're paying me for. It's the weight cut and it's the diet. And it's the, you know what I mean? Like if I'm getting 55 and I'm going to be elite like that, that costs a lot of, that costs money. It takes a lot of work. It takes time. You know what I mean, so it's like, that's what you're paying me for. You're not paying me <laughs> for the yeah, fight. Of course. Yeah. So, Are you able I mean, to in boxing uh, weigh in the night before the bout? Do you have 24 yeah. hours to hydrate? Good. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But that's a big difference. It, you know, for people that have been non-competitors and, and I've never, again, for the record, for those who may not know, I've never fought. I don't pretend to be a fighter, but I've, you know, I've competed and fought BJJ and uh, yeah. wrestling, you know, my whole life. So I'm definitely familiar with cutting weight <laughs> and, yeah. and yes, to his point, Oh my gosh. It's, it's a commitment leaving a table hungry every night and then training mm-hmm. the next morning fasted. Um, and knowing you have three weeks left of that is definitely what, you know, mentally it takes a lot of fortitude for sure. Yeah, for sure. I feel I like to feel like it's like you're a bear, like that's in the cage, just getting fed straps and then constantly getting poked and constantly getting poked. And then that weight, and then you hit that weight cut and it's like, all right, that's it. And then the that's door's it. open. <laughs> you're, uh, you're just It'll break it. It's You're so just true. a bear that's been getting poked for the last eight weeks. Like, and finally, you get a fight. <laughs> right. Well, I'm glad you got your fight, man. I'm so also glad that you, you stay so active, you know. Um, and, and again, it sounds like such a, you know, kind of a generic question, but I really mean it, too. Like, how are you staying so positive? Where do, you, do you have anything kind of to share just around that? Just keeping yourself busy and all, always trying to yeah. stay so positive? You got to always try to see the silver lining, right? I mean, mm-hmm. there's always 
and downs in life. And I've certainly had my share of, you know, both. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you just got to roll with it, man. It's like all about types of bitch. Either you can either be a victim or you can, you know, just do whatever and just keep, keep chucking along and make the most of it. You know, that's yeah. kind of something, you know what I mean? Like I kind of grew up oh. a little, a little rougher, you know, childhood than most. So it's like, I kind of always learned just to fucking, you ain't never going to have nothing. You, you know, if you're always being negative and always being pessimistic, then you're going to always be negative and miserable and pessimistic. So yeah, it happens. You just got to roll with it and make the most of it. Right. Yeah, man. I, I think that, um, well, you have to say, you know, I think you got an important voice, you know, and you got You got a platform and I love sharing my small platform with you to, sh- to share it. You know, um, the truth is, you know, before we ever met, you know, I followed you on social media and you're one of those guys that you're a tough guy, but you're a good guy, you know, and somebody that's seeking to improve and evolve and can manage to find positivity in really hard circumstances. Uh, because before we were ever friends, I, I was just a fan, you know, and I appreciate that, man. I, I appreciate guys with scars that can still be nice and help somebody no. up, you know, and uh, <laughs> I appreciate that about you. Thanks, man. Likewise, too. You know, I recognize that about you, too. And and it's just that's what the world that's what the world needs more now is is men that are true men that that are warriors first, protectors first. You know what I mean, they, it's not it's like, oh, you're having a bad day. So so what, man? Like right. you're, you still got you still got you still got a job to do as a man. You know, you still got right. women, children protect. You know, you got the jobs that need to get done. You got money. Right. You need to get, like it ain't about you. So that's that's also something too. like when I when I had my kids. Like it became so much easier for, I mean, not necessarily, easier, but just easier for me to just do the hard shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it wasn't about me anymore. You know, I had two little kids yeah. that were relying on dad to, you know, bring home yeah. the bacon. Oh, I understand. <laughs> yeah. I understand a hundred percent. And, and uh, all those things sound cliche, but it's absolutely true. And, and, and life changes. Uh, I learned it with my son now, my, my, you know, I have a 12 year old daughter. I thought I knew that lesson already, you know? <laughs> And, and then my son was born and he teaches me something every, every day, something new. He, he has special needs. So, you know, he has different, uh, well, different needs, you know, and he, and yep. we have to work with him a lot, a lot more closely with things and challenges. And, and um, every day I learn, you know, it is just never going to be about me and, and, and that's okay. Like it's not, yeah. I don't mean that in a sacrifice way. I mean, that it, it shouldn't be, and that's cool. And my job is yeah. to make their world, man, the best, what I, you know, the best I can ever make that and provide the yeah. things for them, you know, and um, exactly. yeah, you know, and, and, and I think it's important that, uh, again, these things may hopefully don't sound too silly, uh, but I think it's important we share those things. And, and that's why I shared it with you too, man, because you inspire me yeah. and that's why I, I will champion you to the end, you know, and, you know, I got your back too, because you're out there doing the hard work. You are too, man. That's, that's, that's what it is. Just us recognizing that in each other, you know? Mm-hmm. So definitely that's what the world needs most now more than ever, you know? And yeah, and, sure. sure. But Well, I appreciate that a million percent. Uh, t- yeah. A million, a million percent. Uh, so outside of maybe the scope of boxing, um, you know, with your, with your promotion, do you have anything exciting coming up or you just kind of help co-promote the card in October? No, I do. So actually my next event for Midwest cage championships will be November 20th, the night before oh. Thanksgiving. The oh, biggest wow. show, yeah, man. It's the biggest show of the year. Everybody's back home for Thanksgiving, you know, night before Thanksgiving, nobody's got to work. Obviously everybody's out watching fights, having a good time. And uh, we have UFC veteran TJ, the spider O'Brien is taking on Jeremiah Deaver, a local, uh, he was a little local, really good fighter back in the day. They both kind of took some time off and both mm-hmm. want to look at come back. So Really looking forward to that. The rest of the cards are going to be stacked, and yeah, man, I'm I'm really excited. It's awesome. I feel like I'm starting over from the from the bot from the beginning in a lot of ways since like COVID and stuff. But it's so exciting because the buzz is still there, and it feels like you know it's like yeah, now it's like the future is wide open, you know, and I'm mm-hmm. able to create the vision that I whatever I see fit, you know, and yeah. it's it's a lot of work, but it's exciting to think about. Yeah. Yeah. That entrepreneur spirit, man. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely inspired. No, that's awesome. That's really great that you're building that card. And, 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 and I agree. It's, 
you know, I feel like the fight fans out there, even with COVID, like we, we've really been craving this, you know, we really want to have these fights and the world to start moving again. And, um, and, and honestly, it starts locally, you know, I mean, there's good to have a powerhouse in the UFC that can go to fight Island or to Florida, but you know, we need the other promotions to survive too. So fighters can have fights and fans can watch fights. Man. Yeah. That's, it was, it was a tough, it was tough out here for fighters, you know, during COVID and for everybody, obviously, you know, not just for fighters. Think about the local promotions. They all make money on ticket sales. Like they don't have pay-per-view. You know, a lot, most of these guys on it was, it was literally any promotion that had um, a deal with like, you know, UFC fight pass or like flow grappling or anything like that where they sell pay-per-views, you know, for 10 bucks. That was the only way these guys were even able to have shows. So right. Thank God for those the, the few that were able to, you know, keep it going. And yeah. in the state allowed it anyway. You know, there's some states like yeah. Iowa that didn't even allow it. So yeah, exactly. They were so afraid of being super spreaders and yeah, the, <laughs> the unknown, yeah. you know, the unknown was nuts. Yeah, it's wow. Well, I'm glad I'm glad the state is definitely loosening up, moving on, and, and both boxing and MMA. That's that's awesome. That's great to hear. Um, man, thank you again. I know we're coming up on time, Johnny. Is there anything else uh, or any other? Uh, I know IG is a good place to kind of get a hold of you, but are there any other maybe websites or uh, other places that people can kind of go on social media if they want to look more into uh, your fight promotion or anything like that? Uh, just check me out on fans only. <laughs> awesome, man. I just get out on fans only. No, hit me up on Instagram and on Twitter, Hollywood Case and uh, Johnny Hollywood Case on Facebook. And just thank you for your time, man. I can't wait to can't wait to fight again. Can't wait for the world to be back open. Can't wait for my show on November 20th. So a lot of big things happening, man. Yeah. Well, we'll be in touch. You forever have my support, man. Thank you. Uh, True story. John Gibson. Today's episode. Johnny Case. Appreciate you. Thank you, man.